So, So it's it's this one. If you uh, actually got this one correct and you're sitting in front of your homework, you can go to sleep for five minutes. Uh, so to compute the principal stresses, we want to those are the eigenvalues, and the eigenvalue problem is that the determinant of sigma minus lambda i is equal to zero, and we would solve for the sigmas. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is write down uh, sigma minus lambda i. So we'll, we'll rewrite sigma and I'm going to go kind of slow and explicit step by step. I'm recording this and I'll post it so you can go back if you don't understand. So that's sigma minus lambda i is just the identity matrix. That's equal to 18 minus lambda, 0, 24, 0, minus 50 minus lambda. OK. And so then we want to take the determinant of this thing, set it equal to zero. So remember how I told you to take the you could take the determinant by taking this term and multiplying by the determinant of that guy, right? So then we would do this times the determinant of that, but it's zero, so we'll skip that. that would, and that would be a minus sign in front of it if it wasn't. Right? So it would be minus this times the determinant of that, but it's zero. So then, then we have the last one is this times the determinant of this. So 24 All right, and that's equal to zero. Yes. So then you have 18 minus lambda minus 50 minus lambda 32 minus lambda minus 24 squared. Okay, so you could multiply that all out and then solve the quadratic equation, right? Using, uh, well, actually it's a cubic equation. So you, you could multiply it all out and then factor it or whatever. <coughs> anybody, does anybody know how to solve this really simply? How about stick it in your TI-89? <laughs> You could do it, but you know you're, it's okay to to use a, a computer or, or whatever, right? And if you do, these are your three eigenvalues, or in the context of stress, that's your principal stresses, right? They are pretty straightforward. I mean, it, it would it wouldn't be that hard if you if you multiplied this out. I think you could factor it just by i. It's it's not going to be, that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.
Well, you don't know. No, no. Uh, you, you'll know the directions we're about to solve for them. They're the eigenvectors. Let's 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 solve for it, and you'll you'll see. All right. So, so those are the magnitudes. Okay. So, uh, so for lambda. equal to 50, then we want to solve, you know, the, the, the equation lam uh, sigma minus lambda i v equals to zero, zero vector. Okay, we're going to solve that for v. Okay, so we're going to plug in 50 for lambda. So we have 18 minus 50, zero, 24, 0, minus 100, 0, 24, 32, minus 50. That's equal to minus 32, 0, 24, 0, minus 100, 0. Right, and of course, if we augment this with zero, 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 that this is the system of equations we're trying to solve. And I, I think some of you just tried to maybe plug this system of equations into your TI-89, and then do solve. And, and I don't really know what it does there because there's an infinite number of solutions. I'd have to go and look at it. I don't know off the top of my head what it does. I haven't used a calculator in ages, like a, a hand calculator. Uh, but I think there's a function in your, you know, if you have a, a, a TI-89 or the, the HP equivalent, you know, an engineering calculator, there should be a function called RREF, uh, where you put a matrix in here. So this would be the matrix that you put in there. What RREF stands for is reduce row echelon form. And that's what we're doing when we do these matrix operations. We're putting it in reduce row echelon form. So uh, whether the linear solve or, you know, the solve equation thing works or not, um, I'm not sure. But I know RREF will work. If you, if you put the matrix in right here and you, uh, you know, run this function RREF, then <laughs> you'll get the, what we're looking for and you'll be able to write down the solution then. So, okay, but anyway. So this is not that hard, so I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of do, uh, well, I'll do one at a time, because I think this is where a lot, a lot of people got confused, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to take 1 24th of row 3, okay. So I have... So I have 1, 0, minus 3 fourths, right? 0 minus 100, 0 minus 32, 0, 24, okay? So at this time, I'm going to do two of them at once, okay? I'm going to do... Uh, one thirty second of row one and minus one one hundredth <coughs> of row two. Right. So then I have minus one zero three fourths zero one zero one zero. Okay, so now you see that rows one and three are not linear. You know, they're they're not linearly independent of one another. That's uh, what we say, right? You know, I can mult. You can see if I multiplied by minus one, they'd be the same exact row, right? But I'm going to leave them like that so I can just add them together. So I'm going to now I'm going to add row. One to row three, 
that, that's going to be my new row 3. Right, so then I have minus 1, 0, 3 fourths, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now I can I can write down the the comp you know so now I have x one equals to three fourths x three x two is equal to zero and x three is free. Okay. Now, you could choose one, and that's typically what you do, but I don't like fractions. So I'm going to choose x3 to be 4, right? And then when I plug that in up here, then I have 3. So then I have 3, 0, 4. So v1. is equal to 3, 0, 4. Okay, it's also equal to 3 fourths, 0, 1. If I would have chosen, everybody see that these are in the same direction? These two vectors are in the same direction. They have a different magnitude, but they're in the same direction. All right. But with, when these eigenvectors, all we're concerned with is the, the direction. Okay? So, so you asked about the, my little cube, right? Yeah. All right. So, so if we wanted to draw that, okay, we would so if this is my Cartesian space you know, then I have a vector that's let's see this is x1 x2 x3 so I have a vector that is uh, 1 2 3 in the x1 and 4 in the x3 one, two, three, four. So it would be somewhere over here, okay? And it's in that plane. So this is my vector, okay? This is my eigenvector, right? So then that little cube, or little stress cube, would be oriented such that one of the faces I don't know if I can draw this perf correctly, but no, that's not right. <laughs> well, of course, <laughs> awesome. Lo I love Microsoft. Anyway. So yeah, so that, that direction, one of the faces of the, of the cube would be normal to that direction, okay? And then the traction vector acting on that face, normal, would be of magnitude 50, because that was the eigenvalue. So the normal stress to that face, defined by the direction, would be 50. Okay? So... So that's just one vector. There's two more to solve for. And we just follow the same procedure. You know, it's very step by step. It's, it's not, not really tricky at all. I mean, just plug in the eigenvalue and perform the row operations. And that's it.